Thank you, Canada, for joining us today for another segment of Pop TV powered by Pop Ticker. As you know, we are all about supporting local Canada. And today we are so blessed to have a special guest with us, Warrant Officer John Gallagher from the Canadian Armed Forces joins us tonight as we head into Remembrance Day, November 11th, 2020. So thank you so much, John, for being with us today. And thank you for your service. Thank you very much. And thanks to Pop TV for having me on this evening. You know, typically in the past, you'd always see things as Remembrance Week, which still exists, but we could all acknowledge right now, we're in very different times. And of course that's gonna reflect how people remember it's going to be very different this year. It's going to be more different than any other year we've had prior to this. And that's what we're going to talk about. But first, we'll go back. We'll go back to where we are and what it means to us, what it means to me and everyone else, and our perception of it. Remembering. Of course, remembering is something that we say. We remember, we remember, we remember. And it's very important. But we also have to acknowledge remembrance is a cognitive act. Remembrance is a human act. Remembrance is hubris, it's celebration, it's mourning, it's all of the above. At the end of the day, it's what you want it to be for yourself. But then we introduce other elements to help us remember, because the important part about remembrance is remembering not to forget. That's the key thing. And that's why these symbols then surround us all these times. When we go back to historical reference, we see World War One, which at the onset of it, no one anticipated at that time how bad that war was actually going to be. They didn't acknowledge the fact that industrialized, industrialization had picked up to the pace it did, and wars part of that were nowhere near as devastating as World War I turned out to be. At the end of World War I, and it's, think of it, the violence hangover. People then looked back and realized the devastation and destruction, and of course the death that resulted because of World War I. The game had changed. In such a high level, of death was shocking to most on all sides. When we look at War One, people deployed and they went to Europe and they stayed in Europe. And if they fell in Europe in the fields, that's where they fell and they were buried close by. The idea of bringing people home that we see modern times just didn't exist for all the reasons, logistics and everything. And so we have graveyards in Europe, we have graveyards around the world, we even have graveyards in the Middle East that have people buried in them that didn't return. And that's a key point. So how do you remember something that's not there, something that didn't come home, something that you love that didn't come home? Well, I look at it natural elements. The poem Flanders Field draws it out really well by John McRae, row by row with the poppies. I love it. I love the idea of the poppy. Here it is here. Not just plastic, not just a pin, but an idea. When you look at the devastation around you, when you look at what just happened, worldwide trauma, you have to look at something beautiful. You have to look at something, dare I say, natural. It has to be a natural element. It has to be passive. It's remembrance. And this was it. For anyone who's been to Europe, or many countries where poppies grow in the wild, including some places in Canada, you see it, and it's perennial, and it's there, and it stands out. It's something that marks the landscape, that identifies the natural aspect of it. So when we look at this, there's that natural element to it. Now, when we wear it, that makes it something different. with why we do this and there it is right 
and you put it on and you wear it. Now there it is. We both have our poppies on and many people are wearing poppies right now. When you donate to the Legion, and that's important to say, you donate. It's not only donating monetary. You're not only donate you're not only doing a fiduciary act. What you're doing is you're investing in an idea, you're investing in a belief, and you're showing respect in a very unique way. It's not really done that way anywhere else. Other organizations use it, but it's not like this. And when we look at typically Commonwealth countries, even Jamaica and countries like that, they practice the same thing at the same time. It's a collective way of remembrance. It's collective grief. It's collective looking at respect in a certain way. When people donate and wear a poppy, it's not the simple thing of wearing a poppy. As we were talking earlier, you're investing in an idea. You're saying, I remember, but I also believe. And I think that's critically important by saying, I remember, but I believe. What do I believe in? I believe that sacrifice is worth it. I believe that the way I live now was as a result of many of those acts. When you wear it, it faces out. It's on your jacket, it's on your shirt, it's on whatever you may be wearing. And it faces out and it's a clearly identifiable symbol to everyone around you to say that respect, belief, and understanding sac large sacrifices are made for what we have now. including the elements of freedom and liberty, being able to vote, being able to live the lives we live, which I think is, is beautiful, to be honest with you, and linking it back to the natural element of a poppy growing in Flanders field and a flower of all things, which is just absolutely amazing. And most times in working with the Legion and donating my time to the Legion, and working poppy stands, this is usually what happens. Someone will take a poppy, as they put it on, they will tell a story. That story usually is about a loved one, someone they knew, a sister, a mother, a brother, a son in some cases, that had gone overseas to an area of conflict and had a certain experience. In some cases, that person didn't come back or that person was a casualty in, in many ways, could be physically, could be mentally as well. That person will tell that story as they put the poppy on. That's why they do what they do. That's why they're putting the poppy on. Keeping the memory of those people alive by putting it on and telling the story. If they tell the story to me, on November 11th, they're going to tell the story to others. And that's what's critically important. That's, what's keep, that's what keeps Remembrance Day alive and continues its trend year to year to year. As we see, and I'm really excited about this, actually. I think this is a great thing. We've gone from, I'll always go back to the flower growing in Flanders Field, to what it has become now. So we realize with COVID and the times we're in now, there's other ways of remembering. And that I think that's absolutely fantastic. There's digital remembrance. Right now we live in the first era in human history that someone's life, if they're young, will be digital from beginning to finish. When you think about in terms of remembrance, you now could have lifelong online memories. And that's gonna change how we remember people remember people and everything in the future. I think there's an aspect to that from, from military as well, where you now have a, a better frame of reference going back and forth, looking at how to remember, because it's there, it's more, more obvious, it's not just the cenotaph anymore. I think definitely for youthful audiences that are watching this, or for, in general, the youth that's coming of age, that, that's something to think of, because you can now reach into it a way you, you wouldn't look in before. And I can attest to my niece and nephew that do that, and follow that, and the Legion's been very good at, at uh, pu pushing that forward.
Thank you, John, and thank you, Canada, for joining us today on our special edition on Remembrance Day. And of course, a heartfelt thank you to all our men and women who have served our country, past and present. We are forever grateful for your service. Thank you and have a good night. <laughs>